see what was going on with the rectifier. And, and so I got to playing with looking at something simple, like the output of a half-wave rectifier on the oscilloscope. This is beginner stuff, but forgive me. Or a full-wave rectifier, full-wave bridge on the oscilloscope. And I discovered, uh, Gary, that if you're going to look at a rectifier, you just got to have a slight load on it. Otherwise, you don't get that pattern that you're expecting with a half wave or a full wave. You get noise and garbage. But if you just put one or two mils of, one or two milliampers of load on that rectifier, then you'll get the pattern that you see in all the textbooks. Gary, go ahead. Yeah, interesting. Well, um, in all likelihood, uh, uh, considering the input uh, impedance of a scope, uh, there may not be, uh, unless, unless you've got a low enough resistance, uh, there may not be enough voltage across the junction and the diode, the junction in the diodes, or the junction in the diode, to uh, actually cause the diode to properly turn on. Now that's an explanation. That makes some sense. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, according to the hourglass, this is WB5 NEN. J0 GX. WS0 O. Keep on as wide as you use. Hi, Will. Hi, Will. Oh, good afternoon. You got a great signal down here, Richard. Yeah, yeah, as do you. Isn't it pleasant? What are you running? Uh, I'm running about uh, 1,250 watts was my last peak. Now that accounts for it. You're, you're peaking up about 20 over over. Oh my, sorry about that. No, that's, that's a pleasant copy, over. Good, good. You're running power, aren't you? Yeah, 500 watts. That's plenty. That's all you need. Um, that's the sweet spot, really. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's, it's enough. Uh, it's uh, not too hard to keep it up, maintain it, and uh, it, it doesn't seem uh, to try to get away from you as bad as more can. Uh, it, it's it's a kind of a nice setup, over. Yeah, only one grid. Only one grid. There's a lot to be said for that. No, Roger, Roger. I don't know. I just thought I'd fire up the loud boomer and run it for a while. And, it, you know, yes, I warm it up for five or six minutes. It's kind of a nuisance, but it's not the end of the world. But it'll, uh, well, when I got on earlier today, it decided that from a cold start it wanted to make legal limits. So I, I don't know. I don't run it that hard usually. I crank things back a little bit. Cool, oh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I, I doubt that it's really working to get the last little bit out of everything. Uh, just kind of, uh, I guess it's my mechanical nature of catch up. Add a little wear and tear that you know, doesn't bother you much, over. Hey, that's absolutely right. What's your weather like there? It's sure pretty here. Well, it was beautiful this morning, and I stepped out, and it was cold. See, it was just beautiful sunshine. I couldn't believe I was freezing out there. It's warmed up now. Uh, we're in that season where it cools off at night uh, pretty good sometimes, especially when a little front moves do. But during the day, the sun will come out eventually. Uh, there's snow on the La Plata, the mountains uh, just uh, west of town, on the west edge of town. And uh, there's snow on the peaks uh, of the ski area. Uh, I can see that uh, looking north. Uh, but uh, when I was over to Crete last week, uh, the snow in, in Wolf Creek was uh, uh, grossly exaggerated. <laughs> but as I said to somebody uh, earlier, uh, and the ski area was all proud of opening, but I would ski on their skis. I wouldn't ski it on mine, over. Oh, okay. Roger that. Roger that. Well, it's. Uh, let's hope for some good ski uh, weather this year. My uh, younger daughter in Albuquerque just bought herself a, a helmet. And, and her own boots, and uh, went to a ski exchange and bought a really nice pair of used skis, and she's hoping for a good season. She didn't want to rent anymore, Will. Oh, Roger, Roger, that's a good idea. I think uh, I, I'm, my only real experience is cross-country skiing, and uh, I, I, I don't know where they got off to. I don't have them anymore. Uh, I've got snowshoes left over. Oh, really? 
Elliot. You know, I've gone snowshoeing only once. Sure. What? I have gone snowshoeing only once. Oh, I, I, I've, got, I've gone into it because uh, one time I, I, I found a rabbit out on uh, a friend's place when I was hunting, but it was like, well, I've done a thousand yards. We measured it last week. It's only 250. And I got about halfway to the rabbit, a little more than halfway to the rabbit, and finally made the shot, and probably about 85 yards, and then went up there and got it, got another one, and walked back to the gate. So that's, that was like 500 yards through the snow, but the snow was knee deep. And at, at that point, I bought a pair of snowshoes on the way back to the house, over. Ha, ha, ha. Good for you. Good for you. Understandable. Go ahead, John. Yeah, very good, very good, Will. You've got a good signal up here. Um, everybody's got a good signal, so that's great. And uh, were these uh, were these cottontails, Will? Well, oh, Roger, Roger. Okay, yeah, yeah. The the uh, uh, they're uh, um, erratic when they jump, um, and uh, unlike the the jackrabbit kind of make these uh, long uh, sweeping uh, runs lots of times. And so uh, uh, if, if they're on the move, it's, uh, it, it's a little bit of a challenging target over. Yeah, I shoot the 22 rifle, so I don't shoot many running shots at them. Not that good. I prefer, uh, uh, well, uh, the ones on the shotgun gun with it some of the best I've made, but they were, they were probably at 85 yards, but I bet it down in the snow when I was one with the ground, not moving at all, but just ideal circumstances to get all my hind legs down in the snow, over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, very good. Very good. Well, uh, Gary, are you all done with the amp now? No, not really. I'm going to replace the RF choke. I've, uh, I'll uh, attack that maybe this weekend. Uh, and then I'm going to pull the, uh, the diode that's too small uh, and uh, put in one of the diodes that Richard sent me. Uh, I was going to comment on the, uh, the weather. It would be a nice day here if it wasn't so doggone windy. It's really blowing out there, 20, 25 miles an hour. Uh, that can take a 55-degree day and make it uncomfortable. And uh, I was also going to comment that I see a lot of cottontails when I'm out walking in the morning. They're out in uh, people's lush lawns just munching away on the green stuff. Over. <laughs> Will's going to come up and visit you. Yeah, I'd like to get a little of that. Of course, shooting about off of people's lawns is, is usually not a good deal, over. Yeah, they generally take umbrage. Oh, you get free elk manure. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, actually, uh, there's plenty of deer manure out in our yard. Uh, K0CX. Yeah, we no, have zero right there. Zero water through here and eat everything. I mean, if it's green, it gets eaten, and it's really destructive on that. Some of the neighbors have really nice flowers and plants and stuff like that. And, uh, boy, at certain times of the year, like right now, the, the deer will just be tearing them up, over. Well, they'll ruin the bark on a deciduous tree. Now, around here, so will the rabbits. I can help you with the rabbit problem. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I understand.